All right, I'd now like to discuss what happened with that Mandelbrot area program. And there's a bit of code here. You may even want to have your solution of it up on a screen with you for you to look at while we talk about this. So here's a version of the program as it was given to you. And you can see uh, we set up the basic environment. Then we go through, and I have a, a single for loop parallel four that's going to go through and it's going to compute the, the values of the Mandelbrot set, which points are inside the set and which are not, so it can test them and then compute an area. And then it prints the result when you're all done. And the actual work of testing a point is in a separate function that we call. And so that's the basic version of the program. Now, each time I run the program, I get a different wrong answer. So it doesn't get me the right answer. So something's broken there. But not only that, I get a different wrong answer each time I run it. That's a race condition, as we've talked about many times. So that means the threads are chomping on each other and screwing up their answer. And not only that, the, the answer is wrong. OK, so how do I debug an OpenMP program? So let me tell you, you will save yourself a lot of time if you learn how to use whatever parallel debugger you conveniently have access to. Unfortunately, there is no truly portable parallel debuggers out there. So that's a little bit tricky. But when you pick whatever development environment, you know, if, if the Intel tools, there's a debugger that you can work with in the Intel tools. Um, the Visual Studio debugger works really well with multiple threads. The, the idea is uh, you, you need to find a debugger for the environment you're used to. And I'm not going to go into it now because that would be a whole separate series of lectures. But it's worth the time to get a handle on whatever parallel debugger is available to you, even though we won't go there. All right, so now that I've told you to use parallel debuggers, what do I do? Well, what I do is I go through to my parallel loops. And then you can see I've replicated the one here, the, the central one that goes through and tests each point to find the ones that are inside the Mandelbrot set. And I have put default none on that Pragma OMP Parallel 4. So I add a default none. And when I do that, it points out that the loop control index J was not made private. So this is a wonderful little subtlety. I hope I, I, hope I tripped some of you up, or some of you had a lot of fun digging this one out. Remember, the loop control index of the loop that is parallelized will be made private for you. So I don't need to that first loop, the I index of the first loop, I don't need to make that private. But that same courtesy does not apply to the J index of the nested loop. So I needed to add a private J. So that's one thing I had to do. And I found that out because I put default none on there, telling me you must declare the type of each and every variable. There are other problems here, and I'm just going to show you the answers I found. All right? So here's the code for the working version of this program. And there's a series of changes I had to make. Let's start with the changes I made to that central loop. This is not the function test point. This is the loop inside the main program. And so you can see what I did is I stated that private, the index C had to be private. And I stated that the index J, the loop control index J, had to be private. So I have a private clause C and J. But there's that variable EPS, which I made private in the original program, but it didn't have a declared value. It didn't have an initialized value. So that one had to be first private. So you can see what I did there is I made that first private. All right, so that fixes that body of the loop. So let's look, at, let's look inside test point. In test point, there's a couple things going on. All right, first thing you have to notice is in the original version, I had test point as a void function. And it picked up the array it was going to work on from the global file scope. Well, there's a problem with that. Because what that means is I have a race condition. That means all the threads are walking through the same array at the same time. And that, that leads to a race condition. So I changed the function prototype to test point so you pass in the point it's going to test. It doesn't take it from the global file scope. Now, this seems a little strange that we would do this in this example, but you're going to encounter this where people will hand you code to parallelize, where they pass things into functions through a file scope variable. 
And this is a common trend, a common uh, feature of parallel programs, that you tend to not want to use those file scopes. You tend to want to have more control over the scope of your data. So therefore, you pass it in. So you can see in this code I went through and I changed the function test point so that it passes in the point it's going to test. Okay, I'm almost done. I made that change. But the other thing is if you look inside test point, once I've tested does this point fall inside the Mandelbrot set or not, if I find out that it does, I need to increment it. Well, that wasn't atomic. It wasn't, it wasn't protected. So I could have the threads trashing each other that halfway through the increment, another one could start an increment. So I had to protect that with an atomic clause. So I put the atomic in there. So those are the major changes that I found. And once I did that, uh, the, the program worked and gave me the right answer. I hope you're able to find all those bugs. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you that this is a more difficult, this was definitely a more difficult example of, uh, of, of the exercise we've given you so far. This is where the one where you really had to go through and look at the code and think about all the OpenMP constructs you were given. So I don't want you to feel bad if this one gave you a harder time than the other ones. That's by design. But at this point, you now have a pretty good, complete grasp of OpenMP because, you know, the data environment combined with the synchronization, combined with how we break up work between threads, eh, all of it kind of falls in this example. So now i got one last little challenge for you. Now go back to that serial pi program. This is the last time I promise that we're going to deal with this particular pi program. Now that you know about modifying the data environment, What's the simplest change, the smallest number of changes we can make to the program? Here's my solution. It's beautiful. Pound include omp.h. Okay, still want to be able to pick up function prototypes or types. But then I have one pragma and only one pragma to create the parallel version of this program. Pound pragma omp parallel for private x reduction plus sum. See, before you knew about private, you may remember, we had to have that parallel region so that I could declare x as double, then my pragma OMP4. But because I now know about the private, I can do that right within that same directive. Now, there's a reason that this is so important. What if I run this program through a compiler that doesn't know OpenMP? They're actually out there, not many. Most compilers know OpenMP. Compilers in C, just reminding those of you who don't know this, if they don't recognize a pragma, they skip it. Okay, look at this code. This is a fully functioning working program that gives you the correct answers if I skip that pragma or follow it. So I have parallelized this program without breaking or changing the serial version of the program. That's elegant. And when you're talking about serious engineering over professional level applications, that kind of flexibility to not break my serial program when I parallelize it is very, very important. And that's one thing that's in there by design in OpenMP. So that's pretty darn cool. And that finishes our discussion of the Mandelbrot area program. And that finishes our discussion of the uh, numerical integration to estimate pi.